Welcome to Foosball Radio. This episode of Foosball Radio is brought to you in part by 518 Prince. For all your custom foosball apparel and swag, 518prince.com. Represent. Hey there, it's Tom Robinson. Thanks for joining us. Let's begin with a bit of irony as this is being recorded. The northeastern section of the United States, where we are, is being battered by the winter storm dubbed Ezekiel. Winter storm Ezekiel. And as it happens, we're about to chat with pro foosball player, Team USA men's coach Ezekiel Moore. Given this and the end of the year, this is an excellent time to reminisce with Ezekiel regarding his trip with Team USA to Mercia, Spain back in July. Tony and I and and, uh, a few other guys, we could not believe it. We just went, oh! (laughs) You know, everybody went screaming. Just moments away, Ezekiel Moore on the Ultimate Foosball Podcast. Foosball Radio. Ninety-five percent of success in life is showing up, but to be truly outstanding, you have to represent. Leave that to the pros at Five One Eight Prints. Top of the line printing for just about anything you can wear: screen printing, embroidery, and promotional items designed to your specs. Leave your mark with Five One Eight Prints, especially for your foosball jackets, tees, hats, bags, and more. Turnaround is rapid with the best quality material. Represent Present. Hit them up now at 518prints.com or visit the brand new store at 7th State Street in downtown Troy, New York. Telling the story of foosball one player at a time. Foosball Radio. The men's division of Team USA, Ezekiel Moore, is rejoining us for Foosball Radio to give us an overview of what happens. So, Ezekiel, welcome once again back to the the microphones of Foosball Radio. Thank you. Uh, You did a lot of globetrotting this summer. First of all, how do you feel now that you've come back? Accomplished, I guess, would be the best one, you know. Um, It seems like every time we go over, they try to stack the deck against us. This time was, (laughs) they stacked it higher than it's ever been stacked before. Really? Now, when, when you say stacked what do you mean by this united states the, at least the men they they are the best playing country as far as number of players and in team events okay and you know out of the i think nine world cups i think we've won six mm-hmm. or at least uh, at least six i think it is okay so it seems like the rules have changed sometimes to take away that advantage that the united states has huh. like the yeah, like the year that uh, Luxembourg won, they changed, uh, instead of having an overtime format, they kind of did like you do um, in, like real soccer, I guess, you have a, a shootout, so mm-hmm. to speak, Okay, and which kind of takes away some of the dominance of the, of the team format. So th- this was uh, to give the other teams a slight edge, <laughs> shall we say? Yeah, uh, kind of a, ha- yeah, exactly, kind of a hand up, and. It almost worked into their favor, but, you know, we kind of overcame. I have okay. to admit, there were some other factors that we had to overcome as well. So we had some misunderstandings on on the time that we were supposed to play. I thought we okay. were going to actually forfeit a match. Oh, well, that <laughs> and, wouldn't be good. No, I thought we were going to forfeit our first elimination match, which would have been huge. So Right. But uh, it got worked out. You okay. know, we had a... We had a misunderstanding about the time we were supposed to play. Yeah. And uh, they let us, they gave us a little leeway because I think there was just a little misunderstanding in the ITSF staff. Sure. When you're as a coach, because you're representing this this men's division team, what do, what do you have to do specifically? You have to go to the officials? Actually, that morning, you know, I heard, I heard a rumor that you know, we were supposed to play at 10 o'clock and I've, my phone started lighting up that we were going to play at 12. Okay. And so I'm thinking, so we need to notify everybody. So we notified everybody, hey, the match is at 12, not at 10. But something didn't seem right to me. And just luckily, the uh, 
head of the ITSF, uh, Fareed Lewis, was at our hotel. So I decided, uh-huh. I said, you know what, I better get up and talk to Fareed face to face. Yes. At, at, at breakfast. And I did that. And I got kind of a mixed response. I didn't like the response I got. Huh. And uh, so I, it was my duty to turn in the team lineup before the match, because before the match, you have to turn in a team lineup okay. of how, uh, how you're going to play the match. He said, well, if you play at 12, no matter what, the, the lineup has to be in by 930. Well, so, something doesn't seem right. So I go down there to turn in the lineup. It's 10 after 9 or 9 or 5 or whatever it was. And he looks at me and he said, will you be ready to play at 10? I went what <laughs> so you know my, the, the players are kind of scattered in different hotels all around the city so oh right and that was uh two players that were there but they wasn't they didn't get the message anyway so they assumed that we were playing a 10 so here i am basically freaking out the head of the itsf is telling me asking me will your team be here and ready to play at 10 i'm like oh my god <laughs> this this is just not happening right now so i mean, i'll call the Rob Morris and a few other guys and said, hey, we need to all get down here and get down here yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah immediately. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, it made me wonder what was going on. But, you know, it all, I think it actually worked into our favor because I think it woke everybody up. I would say. Yeah. Yeah, it it lit a fire on everybody, and and there was no let up. I mean, they these guys, you know, they're all Hall of Fame players, right? They they show why they are. They went in there with a with a mission, mm-hmm. and now that that mission got heightened with everything that was going on. It, like I say, I think it worked out actually to our favor. And if they had not uh, been there and they'd forfeited out of that, would they have been out of that aspect of the competition? That would have been it for the for the United States as far as defending the World Cup title. Oh, no. Wow. Where, yeah, which, you know, I think they understood that would have been pretty huge, especially if the mistake was made by their own staff. Sure. So, oh, no doubt. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, so he gave us a little way, a little leeway for Reed did. He gave us till, basically, we started the match, I think, around 1030. Okay, all right. So we were, we were able to contact everybody. Everybody was able to, you know, get together and then gather up everybody and get there sure. and get warmed up and, and ready to play. Okay. We won that match. We beat, I think it was Switzerland. The first Switzerland. Round. Okay. Yeah. So uh, handily won that. Now, how many other competitions or, or matches had to take place before they uh, they finally stepped up on the podium? Uh, we played, uh, I believe it was two other matches after that. And then uh, that was the last match was for the for the title. Okay. So it wasn't like a yeah. whole series. Like we're so accustomed to in this country, when we play, we have to go through, you know, let's say 30 teams to yeah. make it to that final. Uh, so these guys had, uh, what, two or three other matches? matches yet to, to play after. Yeah, that. because, you know, uh, remember the format was, it was like um, different brackets. It was w- like four separate brackets. Okay. And we had the qualifying rounds. Each each uh, qualifying round had like uh, a set of four, four different countries right. in each bracket. And whoever came out of that bracket went on to, you know, went on to play in the elimination bracket. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you had to accumulate enough points and enough wins to qualify to play in the elimination bracket. Now, yeah, now that makes it clear. So I'm curious uh, when it comes to the team itself. I mean, overall, who who uh, who are the stars for this particular uh, this you, World Cup? You know, it was weird that you asked that because I was thinking the same thing the other day because uh, this team minus one guy from the previous team, we had a couple other players that were new but the guy that saved us last year he played on the senior team this year but the guy but he and that was uh gumson came in and saved us last year in my opinion he won't admit it because he's he's an humble kind of guy but Uh he did his partner kind of came in and saved us this year oh uh tracy mcmillan yes oh yeah and i would say between Tracy coming in and making some pretty huge and key blocks, I don't like taking credit for something, but the way the format is, this the way they had it set up, uh, you could have a team out there that could actually get stuck on the table and have could lose like seven, eight points against them or even more if they were in the 
bad position. Right. And that was the key. I mean, it was starting to turn that way. Mm-hmm. And this other team was shooting bank shots against our two guys. We bank had out shots. There. Okay. All yeah. Right. And they were playing against uh, Blake Robertson and Todd Lafredo, which Todd Lafredo is maybe the best to ever play the game yep. right now. Yep. His 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 sure. career has spanned what four decades. Yep. And he's still playing. He's still winning. Well, he was the goalie. Blake Robinson is the new up and coming guy, future Hall of Famer. If he mm-hmm. keeps playing, okay. Uh, well, Todd and them had decided to use a particular defense, and it wasn't working. <laughs> okay. The guy set up like two shots, scored both of them in a row. He was passing well, and. I was there's certain ways to block the bank. You can the goalie can take a side and the forward takes the other side. Okay. Well, that that wasn't working. Well, the old school tables, you know, back in the day in the in the seventies, they used to shoot a lot of bank shots. Yes. And one of the one of the other ways to block a bank shot is to do what they call fork the goalie rod, which is wherever the ball is, you put two men on either side of it. This is why they call it a fork. Okay. So in other words, you block the release of the shot. Ah, so okay. in between shots, I told, I, I, I yelled out since I was taking the score and I was a coach, I was right behind him. I yelled out, fork him, fork him, Blake, fork him. And, uh, he forked the guy. He changed the defense and all of a sudden the game changed. Started blocking him. He started blocking him. He started blocking him and he started, he stopped the release of the shot. And then I think that that stopped that tide, that negative tide that was rolling at the moment. And, uh, we were able to get, you know, they were able to reach their point total and, and continue playing. Now, in this uh, particular format, how do you actually score enough points to win it? I mean, is it is it uh, the same as, let's say, best out of five or what's what's the uh... Uh, it's and this is kind of like what I was saying. Uh, it was before it was each team, each group of players, uh, opponents and your team would play a total of like four to five points. That's how it was okay. last year. This, yep. This year, you play to a certain number, like uh, increments, and the, you play to uh, it, the team as a whole would play to 240. So once you got ahead of somebody, you know, you would switch at like every four points. You would switch. Okay. Now, let, let's say if you were ahead by eight points. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the winning team that's ahead switches and then here comes the other they go to the other table and the opponent if for whatever reason starts to score points that particular group of players if the opponent continues to score points they can continue to score points until they actually tie the game and then they start going to the next interval that's where you as you know, you can get your your team could get stuck on the table, right? And and get hurt, and that's where Blake and and Todd were at this particular juncture. This team was starting to catch up, and they were uh, getting stuck on the table. Things were not working, and I'm like, oh my god, this is not happening. <laughs> as a coach, we that's got to be tough. That's got to oh, be tough. It was. It, it was. It was. This time, I think, was the biggest challenge. You know, I, you know, I coached last year, but between the for the format changing, the the way they we got confused with the timing of the event. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, so much was going on. All the odds were looking against you, but to say the least. So, but they they pulled it out ultimately, and uh, so yeah. So this is pretty spectacular. Now, what's what's the mood among the 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 group as as this is approaching, as you're getting closer to the end? I mean, was it a nail biter or was it something like you know? It, we were still in control. We were confident. And at one point, the uh, the other point that, and the one time I felt like I kind of let the team down, uh, Terry Rue and Billy Pappas were playing, and they were playing on the Bonzini, and Terry Rue was having trouble blocking. And Terry kept crisscrossing his guys, and I was sitting there thinking, look, and just leave your guys in one formation, and then go we'll side to side, mm-hmm. where he kept crossing his guys and that's when he was getting scored on and i was thinking i should have said something and i didn't you know like i said these players being who they are they're they're team players terry Mm -hmm. said hey man sub me out and you can sub in a player at at a particular point in the match you can okay yeah so you know our our sub was tracy mcmillan and tracy's a very accomplished goalie yes with a lot of international experience so 
And we were talking about that on the side. I said, man, he just he needs to pick a particular formation and then move side to side versus bringing his guys across each other. Because usually when you bring your guys across each other, you get caught what we say I formation, yep. which is basically just one guy in front of the goal. Right. Yeah, of opening two. up uh, two two really giant holes on either side. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we made the switch. You know, Terry said, hey, man, I'm hurting the team. You know, let's get let's get a uh, Tracy in there. And Tracy did exactly what I said he should do yes. is pick a formation and move side to side. So I kind of felt a little bad at that point. I said, and I told Terry, I said, man, I should have told you. <laughs> Quit switching. And he goes, but, you know, Terry being Terry said, no, man, it's not your fault. It's, you know, I just didn't play well enough. But, you know, that kind of interchange between coach and player. But uh, like I said, it, it worked out, though, because, I mean, everybody on this team is, is if they're not in the Hall of Fame, they will be. How do you feel now? Do you want to go back and do this again? Uh, I can't wait. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, and, and they and they announced that it's going back to uh, France the next time. Right, in Nantes? Is that how you pronounce yeah. it? Nantes, yeah? Yes, not, not, yes. And Nantes is the city that's probably supported it better than any city because uh, at in Nantes they would have close to a thousand spectators watching. Wow, and this is a thousand. this is not yeah this is not players this is general public and you know the city itself is just incredible. You you go to Nantes during the World Cup of table soccer and you see moving billboards. They have these moving billboards like at bus stops that that slide up and down. Really, and you'll see one that slide up, that slides up, and it'll say World Cup. It'll say Coupe de Monde. Ah, uh, and it'll have players' picture on it. So the public, the, I've been there when the public has recognized players, the general public. You know, I was there when walking with Tony somewhere, and somebody we didn't, didn't, didn't even know, just a somebody, Joe Blow, Tony Spraderman. You yeah, know? <laughs> so Real, true celebrity, right? Like, Maybe the billboard idea is what we're missing in this country. Oh. <laughs> It's, it's no doubt. It's, it's, they have, I mean, Fareed uh, Lewis has, has done an amazing job in that aspect as, as far as getting sponsorship and, and support and volunteers. I mean, he has volunteers that people that they work for room and board, you mm-hmm. know. Okay. And that's, and that's basically it. And they do maybe the best job as far as running, logistically running a tournament of that size, sure. considering what's going on. All different languages, you know. That's, I don't think people realize the job that he's actually, you know, partaking. No doubt. Yes. Uh, it's just, it's astounding. I know that uh, we've had discussions of late in New York State about, you know, we need to bring back a New York State championships, but, you know, mm-hmm. it's uh, you got to find the right people who are willing to put the time and the effort and really, you know, even sacrifice monetarily uh, yes, um, to exactly. make it happen. There's no guarantee you're going to make any money back. That's just oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, you got to have the passion. That's all there is to it. Man. Yeah, you have to. I mean, I still recognize people that he has on his volunteer staff, you know, from 10 years ago when a lot of the stuff first started. So yep. people are still with them. Cool. Because, because, yeah. of, because like you said, the, the passion. Yep. There's, they, they have it. They want to be part of it. I mm-hmm. mean, it's, it, you just don't find that anywhere. Yep, they're a part of something bigger than themselves, and exactly. they just want to be it. You know, that's that's and they, it. And they rec- they recognize that. So, what are you going to do in preparation for for France uh, in the World Cup? Anything that you're thinking about right now? I don't. I'm not sure what's going to happen with our team. I don't. Yeah. I don't know who's going to come back. You know, Tracy McMillan may be a senior. Okay. By the t- by the time the next one rolls around, he may decide to to join his buddy Dave on the senior team. Sure. 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 Uh, you know, Billy Pappas. He's He's another one of those guys who's a, one of those worldly guys. You know, he yeah. could be I want playing to get, poker or right. who knows what's going on. I, I wanted to ask you, you specifically know. about Billy because I noticed a posting on Facebook uh, around the time the World Cup was just wrapping up. And mm-hmm. he basically made like a public statement that, you know, thank you so much for letting me play uh, yeah. with the World Cup uh, team, Team USA. Uh, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I won't be back. Yeah. And, you know, you know, I heard him say something that if it was going back to France or I'm not I'm not really sure. I kind of caught part of the uh, conversation, but it, the main part that I heard was this was probably his last one. Right. And, and you know, I almost think it's more physical than anything. Cause huh. Billy was playing and the, he he would also get that that hero award because Billy was playing in pain. Really? His back was, and you'd never guess it to see how he 
you know, to watch him play. But Billy's back was killing him. But he stepped up and said, man, uh, I just need to get through this match. Just get sure. me through this match sure. and, and we'll be okay. Because he actually, in the qualification rounds, he actually sat out a match. Did he really? Yes, he sat out against, I don't know if you saw the point, and it's probably the, it would be the number one shot, like the top 10 ESPN things okay. that happened. It, it would have been the number one shot if we were playing against Iran. And we were caught again in that situation where we were ahead, but we wasn't finishing the match. And mm. Iran was coming back. And Blake and I think Todd, maybe, was on the table. Okay. And and Blake shot a shot that went literally three feet in the air. And when it came down, it came down right into Iran's goal. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't an aerial, was it? No, it was. He shot it from the three. I, you know, I, after after we talk, I'll see if I can find that that uh, clip. Yeah, and I'll post it and, I, okay. and I'll uh, tag you on it. But that, <laughs> I'd love to see that that shot, you have to watch the reaction because somebody just happened to be filming. Yeah, and Tony and I and and uh, a few other guys, we could not believe it. We just went. <laughs> went, you know, everybody went screaming because it came it. down. Like I said, it's the first of 40, so it was 39 yeah. 39. Wow. He shoots the shot and it goes over everybody's head and down into the goal. Wow. And, and then there was a split second there where everybody just kind of like, did that happen? Yeah, yeah. What was that? <laughs> and, yeah, and it's like, <laughs> that happened. And then everybody started screaming. Oh, you know, you know? So it was. So Great match, you know. Even the, the, the best in the world can still be surprised and, and oh, shocked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, <laughs> and that was it. You know, that was been that number one highlight. Our sincere thanks to Ezekiel Moore for the first part of the two-part episode of Foosball Radio. Be sure to catch the rest of this interview on our next podcast. I'm Tom Robinson. On behalf of the Foosball Radio team, I want to thank you for listening. And be sure to drop us a line at info at foosballradio.com. We would love to hear from you. Till next time, we will see you on the table. Foosball Radio was brought to you in part by 518 Prince. For all your custom foosball apparel and swag, 518prince.com. Represent.